right, so the scene looks like this. You had your bariatric operation, like your gastric bypass or your sleeve, a week or two ago, and it seemed like the surgery went fine. You spent one night in the hospital, maybe two, maybe you went home the same day, and you felt good at first, but now you feel terrible. You feel kind of like crap. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio, and I see this pretty regularly. I would say it's kind of 50-50 when I see patients back at their one week, their one and a half week follow-up. Um, half of the patients feel fantastic. They're walking on air. They're losing weight. They have fantastic energy. They're already sleeping better because the weight's coming down and their sleep apnea is improved. Um, but another good 50%, they feel pretty miserable. I would say they feel like crap. Um, and so that's the group that I want to talk to and, and talk about what's going on there. Um, you might have what's called the keto flu. Keto flu is not really a scientifically accepted term. It's just kind of common out there on the web right now. And you can actually look at some resources. As it's implied, the keto flu is associated with the ketogenic diet. And a lot of what you're doing in the first couple of weeks after bariatric surgery is just like the ketogenic diet because what you're doing is you're using your fat storage as your sole only fuel source. And so that's like ketogenesis. Um, now, before I talk about the symptoms of keto flu, and before I talk about what's behind the keto flu, and before I talk about what to do, I want to sidetrack briefly into an important topic. If you're having complications, then you need to call your surgeon right away. How do you know if you're having complications? Well, well, the symptoms that might occur that would make me recommend for my patients to call me, or situations where I hope my patients would call me, would be if they're throwing up, because that's not expected. Uh, if they're dehydrated to a point where they have a hard time getting up and walking, if they have serious shortness of breath, if they have a fever or any other sign of infection, or if they've got pain that doesn't make sense to them. And also, I think myself and bariatric teams in general, if you're not sure, we want you to call. Okay, so I'm going to talk about keto flu and how it's kind of a natural body um, response and adaptation to this very low calorie diet, but don't just be reassured by this. If you feel truly awful, call your surgeon. There will never be a complaint about your calling your surgeon. So having made that important note about the potential need to call your surgeon, let's say that you don't feel quite that bad, you just want to know what's going on. We're going to talk about keto flu and some of the common symptoms. We're going to talk about how it works and how it's actually kind of a natural adaptation to this really sudden powerful calorie restriction. And then we'll talk about a couple of things that you can do, although mostly you're going to have to just kind of ride through it. And the most common symptom of keto flu that I see in patients is fatigue. Patients just feel tired. They just don't have their get up and go. Um, they try to go walking out of the house and, you know, maybe they walk for five minutes and then they just feel kind of beat and tired and they've got to go back in the house. Um, the second category of things are things in the, in the category of brain fog or irritability or headaches or sleeplessness. Um, people might be irritable or tearful. There might actually be nausea, which is a problem for bariatrics because we want you to stay hydrated. And if you're having nausea, then that makes the hydration worse. And so um, even though I'm describing keto flu as a non-scary, non-life-threatening uh, condition, it can lead to a vicious cycle of dehydration that you do need to call your surgeon about. So I just want to keep coming back to that. Um, we've got these ideas about things that may not be serious, uh, but no penalty for calling your bariatric team. So those are some of the symptoms that go with keto flu. What's going on here? Um, there are lots of theories. None of them are scientifically proven. Um, the obvious one is that you're going through carb withdrawal and sort of carb detox. Now I think for my patients that's not usually the dominant thing because I think that we go through the carb detox during the one week intense diet before surgery and many patients experience some version of keto flu in that time as well. I think that what's going on at the one or two week mark is probably not carb detox and it's probably usually not a lack of food intake and not a lack of fuel. We're going to come back to that in a second. Um, some people have talked about an immune reaction. I kind of don't really understand that. Uh, some people have talked about changes in the gut microbiome, and that can actually be true because your intestinal uh, normal bacteria depend on some food intake to be healthy. And if you have unhealthy bacteria in your colon, um, then they can create uh, toxic byproducts that can affect your body and cause maybe chills or fever sometimes. This is not an infection, by the way. Keto flu isn't an infection. It's just a term for feeling that kind of body ache, um, chill, maybe sometimes fever sensation without a true fever. Um, the microbiome, like I said, may be important. 
And uh, for a lot of patients, if the keto flu is really showing up, it can be smart to get onto some probiotics uh, in the time frame that's recommended by your bariatric team. Um, what I think is actually the dominant factor for most people suffering from keto flu is a relative lack of hydration. And I want to explain because a bariatric surgical patient in the first couple of weeks after surgery can actually be dehydrated even if they're drinking fluids well. And we want you to drink fluids quite regularly. Um, but the ketosis that naturally happens from fat burning, so if fat is your only fuel source of your body, which if you're not eating anything, you're going to burn the fat. That's a goal, right? So you're in ketosis, and ketosis involves the, um, the body's creation of some chemicals that have side effects of diuresis. Diuresis is the medical term, which means that these chemicals make you pee extra. So your body is actually putting out more fluid than it should at that point, meaning that you're taking in fluids well, but you're peeing out even more than that. Or it could be that you're not taking in fluids quite so well, and you're peeing out more than you should. And so you end up with this relative dehydration. And so a lot of the symptoms, the fatigue, the irritability, the headaches, the listlessness, the lack of stamina, those are all straight up dehydration symptoms. And this shifts very naturally into, okay, what do you do about this? The key thing is to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And actually I think salty fluids can be very useful. Now, salty fluids are interesting because 60% of bariatric patients have high blood pressure coming into the surgery and it's been recommended to them to limit their salt intake. But you're in a different situation right now. First of all, your blood pressure is improving as your weight comes down. But second, you are in a dehydration scenario. So um, it's useful to take in extra salts. And you can usually get extra salts from broth. Um, and depending on whether you like the taste, you might try pickle juice or olive juice. But I think broth is more palatable to most patients. Uh, speaking of blood pressure, you might want to look at your blood pressure medicines. And you might want to talk to your bariatric team about blood pressure medicines if you are on blood pressure medicines. And maybe they should be reduced or perhaps eliminated at this time. That's not something for you to do independently. That's definitely something to do in coordination with your team. Now, because you feel bad and because you're not eating at all, it's very natural to ask, okay, well, should I be eating something at this time? And, and that's a maybe yes, maybe no kind of thing. This is something where I definitely want for you to coordinate with your bariatric team and to get their recommendations and also their recommendations as it relates to supplements. Uh, it's pretty unlikely that you have vitamin deficiencies at this one or two week stage after the operation, but um, that could be part of what you need to help feel better. Um, extra supplements along with uh, probiotic supplements. So in summary, first of all, if you feel terrible, think about calling your bariatric team. That could be your important move. But if you're not feeling quite that sick, then the thing to do is to keep going back to that water, keep going back to that broth, do keep up and walking as much as you can, and this too shall pass, and you will get your health benefits from your bariatric operation. Stay well.